Hello and welcome to Down and Dirty with Darcy. I'm your host, Darcy Smith, also known as Career Coach Darcy. We are here to get down and dirty about careers, uncovering salaries, wild stories, backgrounds, and more from guests with some of the most eccentric professions each week. This podcast is presented by Onami. Just kidding. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Down and Dirty with Darcy. Uh, I'm here with Ramy, and I'm drinking water out of my Stanley Cup. Ben, she's jealous because hey. she doesn't have one. <laughs> I'm really jealous. I've been wanting one for so long. And every time I like put it in my cart, I just can't get over the fact that it's like $60. But I want yeah. one so bad. I'm going to get it after this. I'm going to do it. You got to creep on influencers that have like the codes and yeah, they well, always have like half off or something. So you should be able to find I'm going to check haters because haters, my, my favorite influencer, mm-hmm. he's now a Stanley Stan. So yeah, I was drinking out of it and Ryan was like, you know, those have been around forever. And I was like, no, they just got cool recently. Like whatever. And then he's like, look at your cup. It literally says on here since 1913. <laughs> and I was like, I have no idea. Mean- wow 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 i know i was like i'm just like a trendy little girl who just follows along with everyone else i know that nothing has made me feel more basic until just now but yeah (laughs) welcome welcome to the basic oh speaking of basic the bachelor started last night are you a bachelor fan oh i didn't real okay so i was and i have not watched like the past couple of seasons but you know now why not what who's the who's the person this year what tell me about it uh his name's zach he was like the most vanilla boring person on the show and just a little bit uh not my particular type but he seems like a nice person everyone says he has kind eyes the thing that is tough for me is like now that I'm getting older, I'm seeing these people. They're like 23 and 24. Like, uh, you're like, ooh, actually, it's weird if I think that they're attractive. I know. And I'm like, wait. And then they're like talking about marriage and kids. And I'm still on like the fence about like right. having a family. I'm like, I don't know what to do. So anyway. Oh my that's- God, he's nearly 26. I just looked up a picture oh, of him. Yeah. Yeah. He's wow. 26. He yeah, so that. it's tough. It's a tough one. Um, but the, so other than The Bachelor, there was uh, this is a sports podcast. In case you guys didn't know, so there was a big weekend of football. <laughs> Ramy, did you watch any of the games? Um, the Forty ers <laughs> did play, and I told you last week that I know that they're a team, and I think they won. I did watch part of it. They won, right? Yeah, they did. I'm so proud of you. (laughs) No, I'm learning from this podcast. I I had to come prepared. (laughs) Yeah, no, it came down to the wire. It was Mm -hmm. great. Um, So yeah, so we're up for another big weekend of football, which like can't wait for that. Um, We're going to move on because I mean, I don't know it as much as we're a football podcast, you know, you can't just (laughs) only talk about it. Um, So I have this thing I wanted to ask you about. So I was thinking about like what my favorite things in life are. And so I'll kind of like give you mine. Um, I'm calling it like the Mount Rushmore of things, right? So you have like your top four. So my Mount Rushmore of things are number one, eating. Like I just feel like that encompasses so many things because you get to hang out with people and it's like a social activity. So eating, Walking is my number two. I feel like if I had to like lose everything else active in my life, walking would be like the number one. And then laughing. I just want to giggle all the time. And then my fourth one is reality TV, which uh, I feel like I'm going to get judged for that. But I'm like, when I really sat down and thought about this, because I did really sit down and think about it, the reality TV aspect to me is like, that is what brings me pure joy. And I don't have to like think about anything. It's mindless. It's your mindless pleasure and like honestly everyone has one whether it's that or for guys it's like video games or sports is actually kind of reality tv if you think about it yeah it's like the same but like less drama (laughs) (laughs) boring okay so what's your what's your mount rushmore of things okay so mine i really want to steal some of yours but i'm gonna do all different ones so mine would be one lattes I cannot give them up I just can't quit them and for me like my daily walk to get my latte it just my days are better when I do that so lattes number two is Harry Potter because that is just me if you think of me you think of Harry Potter I can't be myself without that whole universe and it just encompasses everything that is good in life and then my third one I'm putting two together here is TSA pre-check and global entry because I do not wait in airport lines. I will never wait in airport lines and travel is a huge part of my life and 
I just need those things. And everyone should get those things. They are not that expensive. Yeah. Um, and then my last one, I'm, I was going to say eating as well. That's the one I wanted to steal from you because what is life without a good meal and good people around you? But I'm just going to simplify it and say Pop-Tarts because <laughs> I love Pop-Tarts and, you know, I want them to have a comeback. Actually, they're probably really terrible for you, but yeah, that's I okay. love them. Everyone needs advice, but only if you like the brown sugar ones. Those are my favorite. Okay. Those are my okay. favorite. I love, they are plain, but so good. Yeah, we can stay friends then. Um, yeah. Okay, so now I want to turn the tables a little bit and go... I want to, this has become like really popular on my like TikTok and everyone's talking about this. So I want to get your thoughts on it. Leaving a job, like the typical thing is to like give them a two weeks notice or a month's notice or whatever the case. What are your thoughts on just like walking in and quitting? And even like, even if it's not like necessarily a bad environment, it doesn't need to come across as something bad. Actually just walking in and saying, Hey, like just wanted to let you know today's going to be my last day. Like, Ooh. do you think that that's bad? Good. Do you think like, Two weeks notice is like an old school thing. Okay. This is a very interesting. I haven't seen this side of TikTok, but I am going to go find that after this. But I personally could never do it because I am a people pleaser to my core. I am the type of person that quits and gives them like a month's notice. <laughs> Every single time I've quit, I'm like, yeah, I, I'll give you a month. And honestly, I regret doing that every time. I'm like, why am I giving this company who doesn't care about me like you know? So yeah. when I think about it in that way, it, it kind of depends on your situation. You know, if you are in a toxic environment and you really just can't, why you don't owe them. Are they really right. going to, you know, and it, you also have to weigh the options of like, how much of a bridge is this going to burn? For example, like one of the jobs I quit, I did give two weeks notice. I knew I wasn't going to be in that industry anymore. I didn't really care about the connections I made there, but like you also never know how those people might resurface in your life again. So I'm yeah. of the mindset, like, you got to cover your bases. Maybe there's a respectful way to leave the day of, but I don't know what that way is. <laughs> right. I think, too, it's like some people were talking about how if you get laid off or fired or whatever the case, they're not going to give you a two weeks notice. Like, they're just going to say, hey, it's your last day. Pack up. Get your stuff. Like all the tech layoffs, they send you an email. Yeah. Which is crazy. Right. So it's like, mm -hmm. what? why are we owing it to them? And I just kind of, I think about it like this, like, what makes the most sense for you? Cause I know me personally, it's kind of, to me, it was less about the company and like that people pleasing aspect. And it was more about like people pleasing in terms of myself. Like yes. I am a little bit like, I guess I'm like overly, like I have inbox zero method. Like I have all these mm -hmm. lists and to do's. I'm very like productivity based. So for me, like leaving a job with like things kind of unchecked or like not wrapped up would like yeah. mentally hurt me. So yeah, I was like, totally. yeah, like this is for me so I can wrap things up and like tell my customers, here's the next person that you're going to be talking with that sort mm -hmm. of thing. But also like for people that are listening, there is a way to do this where you don't want to put your company in a bad spot. And let's say they're like asking you, Hey, can you at least stay until we hire the next person? You can still tell them like, no, I need to leave. But if you do need me to help come train, I'm willing to do that. If you want to bring me on as a contractor, like a couple hours a week. Oh, that's so smart. it's a really good way. And I, I mentioned this on my Instagram and people were messaging me like, yeah, I've actually done that. And I was able to make like some extra cash, like side hustle wise. So it's kind of nice. Like, I feel like I would definitely tell people to like offer that up. Um, especially that way you can get out sooner. But I think, um, there's obviously industries like sales, for instance, if you do give a two weeks, most of the time they'll just say, actually, you can leave. Like we, you don't need to stay. Um, cause we know you're not going to like be selling for us, you know? Um, but I think it really just depends on like your personal connection with the company. And like you said, like burning a bridge or not, mm -hmm. um, there's companies that won't give you a good referral if you don't provide them with the two weeks notice or with the notice. So just kind of think about like what's in your best interest is what I would think. Um, my other question to you, uh, before we jump into our career column is I was t thinking about like the privacy aspect of like on LinkedIn and stuff, you have your photo, you have the school you went to on your, um, at like your address used to be on your resume. Now we just do city, state and zip code, but still like, I don't know. I've been th kind of thinking about this privacy aspect, like my life, obviously not very private. <laughs> it's like, you can find me everywhere, but I, like not everyone's like me, like people really want that privacy. And I wanted to see what your thoughts were on, like not having a picture on LinkedIn or things like that. Cause from my perspective as a recruiter, I actually don't message people that don't have pictures. That and it's kind of like, it's kind of shitty though. Like I'm like, I, 
I wish like, you know, that wouldn't matter, but there's something about like that professional presence that I'm like, oh, I like, I want to see that, which I don't know. Am I being like, by like, is that a bias? Maybe. No, I think that there's something about the, the photo aspect and just like having a well, uh, I guess, planned out profile that makes your trustability increase. And I feel like it does suck sometimes that, I mean, I feel the fact that you and I both have like an established online presence. I feel like that can work in our favor in some ways and also maybe not. But I think, you know, just that, that level of trust that comes with your online presence, I think is huge. And it is somewhat unfair because it didn't used to be that way. Right. So, and I know some of my friends have completely deleted Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and it doesn't matter for them because they're in like the teaching profession or mm-hmm. other professions where it's not as important to have that presence. So I really think it depends on the industry, but I, I don't know. I'm with you though. I wouldn't probably hire someone or look at their profile if they didn't have it filled out yeah. with a photo. Right. And like, I always tell everyone like LinkedIn is probably the number one, if there's no other tool that you use in your job search, like that is the number one tool right now. And Mm -hmm. I understand that everyone's like, ah, I want to stay away from social media. And I get that. But like, even if you don't have a photo, it's better than having no LinkedIn at all. So give some, give them an opportunity to come find you. Um, so anyways, anything else you, oh, sorry. uh, I was going to say like, some, some of my friends who are like deleted everything and don't want to have, you know, a, I don't know, a public picture anywhere. I'm just like, you know what, what's going to happen? Who cares? <laughs> I, for me personally, my face is all over the internet. What is this other random country going to do with my, I don't care. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't understand the privacy aspect of it, but yeah. I, yeah. You know. I think everyone's different, but also I think like, I was actually wanting to do that thing where they can like scan your face and they would pay you to make your face into a robot. Have you seen that? No. Is it similar (laughs) to the AI thing? Because I did do that. And then I read that like they can use your image, however. And I was like, eh, whatever. (laughs) Oh, shoot. No, there was like, um, I forget in what country, but they were asking for volunteers to basically, they were going to like clone you and make you into a robot, you know, AI, but essentially a robot so they'd have like you walking around but it's like all like your ex machina have you seen yeah. that movie oh no but i know what you're talking about <laughs> yeah whoa yeah. that's creepy i know so i was like trying to fill it out and then they had already found enough people or whatever so it's like dang it but it was like a decent amount of money that they were paying for like your features i would have done that whatever you know? you want to me? okay i robot oh my gosh that's crazy <laughs> i know right um okay well now we're going to get into our career column woo Let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> All right. Now let's get into the career column. All right. Well, story number one. My colleague and our director, also her direct supervisor, were having an affair and the whole office knew about it. They thought that we didn't, but they would call in sick on the same days. They were going to Starbucks a few, block, a few blocks away together. And one day she texted our entire team a picture of his divorce papers. <laughs> Oh. She blamed it on being drunk, but oh. it was 2 p.m. on a Monday afternoon, which, I mean, she could also still be drunk. Sure, but why? <laughs> when she, she was supposedly working. So HR launched an investigation and forced her to quit. <gasps> Glad I got out of there. <laughs> oh, I wonder. She was probably meaning to send the photo to, like, her friends or something. I have no idea. Like, how like, do you mess that up? bragging to the company that, like, oh, being like, did, I fact, won. leave. Yeah. Oh, no. I am Sketch. here for workplace drama like that, though. I love when there's, like, little affairs going on. Yeah. I've heard so many stories from my friends who work in offices that it just Ooh. sounds... I had some. Entertaining to be on the outside of. Yeah. <laughs> I've had a few. And they're friends of mine, so I won't, you can't be, <laughs> I won't yeah. be sharing them. But yeah, workplace drama is real. And wow. you spend more time with your work. That makes sense. You know, Honestly, that's why I'm never letting my boyfriend work in an office because no. Wait, my He's not going to be in proximity with, <laughs> of anything. <laughs> my boyfriend works with all men. So well, I'm like, there's little. Could, oh, uh, totally. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like they're climbing know. poles together. So. <laughs> but less of a threat. Less of a threat. A little bit less of a threat. Yeah. <laughs> for all I know, at least. <laughs> all right. Oh let's, let's see this one. Okay. My manager asked me to send a report every day with all the tasks that I do with exactly how much time I spend on each task. She Ooh. also said that I shouldn't be so concerned about growing into my job. And when I told her I wanted to talk to her about my goals and setting, oh, sorry, and getting a master's degree, she continued to tell me that she didn't think a master's is beneficial for my career and that goal setting is a waste of time. 
Um, she's got to get out I of there. I love that. I love the positivity of all that. <laughs> That's her manager? Yeah. <gasps> I'm yeah. so sorry. No, you got to leave. I do think there's something to like a manager feeling like they don't want that person like growing above them or like they're or maybe they're so good at their job that they don't want to encourage them to grow out of oh, the job. Oh, I know people like that where it's they're so good at executing that their managers yeah. like you got to stay executing. And so, but that's lame. You should yeah. always just, you know, I mean, support yeah. people's growth and what they want to do. I actually thought about this recently that when I hire, I cannot wait to be able to tell the person like, and, and ask them like, what do you actually want in like 10 yeah. years from now? Because I want to help you get there. Yeah. I don't want you at my company. No, for, like, like that'd be weird. Yeah. I mean, unless there's somewhere for you to grow into, yeah. but if there's not like, let's get you to a place where mm-hmm. like you can put things on your resume that are going to help you in the future. Yeah. Like that's all oh, I get so excited. about. That's that. how you should be a manager. That's why one of my past job with Nomadic Matt, the travel blogger, I loved that job. I got to travel the world, but at a certain point he was like, You've been here for four years. Like, there's no growth at this company. Yeah, you gotta go. Yeah, like he was See, like, I'm so gonna. Cool. He's like, I'm gonna f- help you figure out what the next move is. But mm-hmm. you want more, and I can't give it to you. And you, you know, yeah. whatever. And we're still like great friends. We work on little projects here and there. But I appreciated that so much because I probably because I loved that job. I might not you have like stayed. left for a while. I might yeah. have just coasted and right. So. It's important to be a good manager. Your boss is sitting over here right now like, don't get any ideas. It's not time to go yet, Ramey. <laughs> oh, no. Don't worry. I just was talking about how much I love this yeah. job. So hmm, I'm going to stay put. Even <laughs> if they fire me, I'm like, I got stuff to do. <laughs> All right. That's the end of our career column for this week. Um, now let's get into the interview. <laughs> um, uh, how are you? Cool. How's it going? Hi. I've never met you. No. Hey, Darcy. Darcy. Devin. Devin. Ooh. <laughs> D, D and D. This is Down and Dirty with Darcy and oh Devin. Devin. Oh my God, Down and Dirty with Darcy and Devin. That's I a should lot. be a regular host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. We'll uh, see how this goes and then I'll call you. All right, that's fine. I'll have my people this is, call this your is an audition. people. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, let's do get this. Get ready. What do you do before auditions? Do you like slap yourself around? <laughs> what? <laughs> what kind of. I, I know what kind of podcast this is now. Yeah. Um, it's down and Dirty. I mean, most auditions are now self tapes from home. So right. I'm already at home and I yeah. just, you know, prep That's the words. That's so nice. I used to do the whole audition thing and yeah. I would get so worked up, like having to go to the place, like figure out parking, the whole thing. Yep. Right. And then I'm already like and then freaked wait out. a while. Yeah. It's been self tapes for a while now. At first I really liked it. I can choose the take. I, I'm at home, you know, yeah. right at this point, now that it's been years, I miss auditioning Going in person. In. Yeah. yeah. Because now everything's on me. I got to shoot it. I got to edit it. I got to upload <laughs> yeah. it. I got to find someone to come read with me. Like I'd rather just go in and meet someone in person and like right. read for them. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay. We're going to get into that Let's, and all of that, but yeah. let me do a little quick bio for those who don't know you. Yeah. Um, Devin is an actor, podcaster, musician, and creator. He's also a former, whoa, also a former child actor known for his role as Ned Bigby in Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide. He also has a podcast with Anami, whoop, called Growing Up with Devin. Check it out. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So my first question just has to be, do you, when you're out and about, do you get recognized? Like, are they like, Ned, you're Ned. Like, is that what happens? Yeah. But it's like, <laughs> but it's like, it's like casual getting recognized. You know, I'm like, uh-huh. I'm like low level famous. So like, <laughs> uh, so like sometimes, yeah, I'm like checking out at the grocery store and the person's like, oh my God, you're Ned. And I'm like, yeah. Hey. <laughs> and then I leave and it's like really That's mellow. It. Yeah. And it just happens like, you know, Ned's like hit a generation. I feel like it's like tw- people 21 to 31 maybe know who I am okay. and anyone yeah. outside of that doesn't. Yeah. So I don't think I would recognize your face. Like, cause I watched it, but I wouldn't say I like watched it religiously, yeah. but I watched it. And so now it like, it's clicking, but I wouldn't, if I saw you, I'd probably say, Hey, you were on Greek, right? Amazing. <laughs> that's, I am a that's Greek what, wow. <laughs> and most people have yeah. no idea what Greek is. So. Right. So, uh, uh, Peter, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm Season good. four. You yeah. got it. Yeah. Oh Pledge my god. Spidey. I was obsessed with Greek. I I didn't know <laughs> I it until it. I got on it, and then I binged all three seasons, and this I absolutely so loved good. it. Is it? I loved I love Greek. it. Can Cappy we, was it? my love. Cappy. Oh, Cappy come on. Is so Michael much. Foster. Oh my god. He, love him. He, he, you would love him in real life. He's set it up. Oh, He's a set it up. <laughs> set it up, baby. <laughs> Oh, man, that's um, great. Yeah, that was fun. And, yeah, I don't know. I get surprised sometimes when I get recognized. Sometime during the pandemic, I got recognized through my mask. And I was like, oh, those how, eyes, those baby boys. But how the hell? <laughs> With a mask on? I think I finally felt like an adult when I stopped getting recognized often. Mm. I was like, 
I think I'm finally not looking like an absolute baby child. <laughs> <laughs> you got the beer going now, though, so you're uh, getting up there. Yeah. What, um, walk, take us back. Like, where are you from? How did you even get involved in acting? Give yeah. us the rundown. I'll give you the, the spiel. I mean, yeah. I, I started acting when I was a kid. I grew up in uh, the suburbs of Atlanta in Georgia. Um, I was just a little ham. I was just mm -hmm. a little ham kid. I loved attention. I saw uh, Ace Ventura and Austin Powers as at like six years old and just like recited the whole movie <laughs> and just yeah. found those characters and like Mike Myers and Jim Carrey hilarious. And my parents saw me like loving it and they were like, do you want to like do theater maybe? And I was like, sure. Yeah. And then I loved theater. And then the people in the theater were like, do you want to maybe like audition for stuff? And I was like, sure. And then I auditioned for stuff in Georgia and then got an agent in Georgia. And then my agent in Georgia was like, hey, do you want to go out to L.A. and audition wow. for stuff? And I was like, sure. And then I booked Ned's and it was kind of just this like was life. That the first big thing you booked? Yeah. And it was wow. my second pilot season. It was my second season in L.A. auditioning when I booked it. That's wild. So like life was like really my parents were putting me in positions to like support what I wanted to do as a kid. That's so And then cool. life was like opening up to me for a while and then like rode the Neds wave. And That's I really I'm, supportive parents. Did you guys oh, move to LA before you got Neds or was you no, were just it was, it was gradual over time. Okay. Yeah, it was like my mom and I would come out for a couple months. In LA, there used to be something called pilot season, which was like auditions happened mainly from January to April. And like that was the main audition season. So kids from all over the country would come out at that time. That doesn't exist anymore. Auditions are just all year round now. Mm -hmm. um, so it's changed, but at that time, we would come out for a couple months, and then when I booked Neds, we'd come out, shoot Neds, and then go back to Georgia. How many seasons of Neds are we there? We did three seasons, 55 episodes. Nice, and it was on Nickelodeon? It was on Nickelodeon. Cool, and then when you booked it, how many, like, I, you might not know this, but like, did you beat out other people? How many callbacks oh, was I'm it? Sure. Like, what, um, what was the? I mean, I don't know how many kids auditioned. Uh, I went in probably, three, four, five times, something oh, like wow. that. You yeah. know, there's like rounds of it and then yeah. chemistry reads where you're reading with other kids for the other co-stars. And um, and then we, we, we'll we talk about it on um, a different pod of mine, but uh, after the pilot, we, we filmed the pilot for Neds and then we have to wait to find out if it gets picked mm. up and go to series. And we got the amazing news that Neds was going to series, but we got the horrible news that one of the three main characters was gonna get recast and we had to go back for mm. one round of auditions again. And it was a possibility that I got recast, um, Lindsay, who played Moe's, or it was a kid named Steven Markarian who played the original Cookie. Whoa. And yeah, so we got this amazing news, like congrats, your show's going to series, but you have to come in and audition for your role again, which was like, so scary and so bittersweet to like say goodbye to Steven. But now Daniel Curtis Lee is one of my best friends, so. Right, right. And life works out. does Steven, he still act? No idea. <laughs> no idea. Sorry, bud. <laughs> Don't know where he Don't went. Don't know, man. <laughs> we all rode the Ned's wave. <laughs> Don't know, man. We caught the wave and he was left yeah. behind. No, he actually ended up back on Ned's. Like the producer brought him on for like a, a smaller oh, role. Cool. Like, yeah. I saw him during Ned's, but that's cool. I haven't talked to him in years. Yeah. What's it like being on a like TV show that's like that and you like probably get so close with everyone? Yeah. Like, Our show in particular, um, you know, there's like a lot of stories coming out about other shows at the time and the, the atmosphere on set and the drama and all the shit. Our show was truly like amazing. We were having a great time. That's Scott cool. Fellow, How old were you? I was 12 to 15 okay. shooting that. Mm -hmm. And Scott Fellows is the man who created our show and he's just truly a wonderful human being and father. And like he set the tone for our whole show and our whole set atmosphere. And you know, it's a lot of kids. Um, a big crew, hard work. Every kid legally has to have a parent or a guardian there. So it's like a lot. And we had a blast. We were family for three years. That's like so it cool. was a very fun time in my life. Yeah. And so when you get the news that there's no more Neds or when you, did you already know that it was gonna be three seasons or were you guys kind of waiting for each? We knew after three seasons that if it were to continue, we'd have to revamp the show for high school. Mm. So we knew it might go, but we knew Scott had to kind of pitch Nickelodeon on like high school. Here's how we take it further. And that was up in the air during third season and we were waiting to hear. And then we got the news like they're passing on high school and the show will be over after this season. Got and to it. be honest, at the time, I think all of us were 
excited. Like it was a little bittersweet, but it was like, cool. Like we've been doing this show. You're ready. Yeah. yeah. Like we've been doing this show. I was going to say, did you cry? <laughs> no. I cried. Yeah. <laughs> I cried my last uh, night on set just, mm. just for the memory. Like it was bittersweet, mm. yeah. but I didn't cry when we found out. I, it honestly felt good. It was like, cool. Let's see what's next. In hindsight, I should have cried <laughs> because, yeah, what was next? because the road w has not been, it wasn't uh, fun. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it, I my career did not open up in the ways I thought it would after Ned's and it's been a struggle ever since. <laughs> so I should have cried. Daniel and Lindsay both went on to do many more shows mm -hmm. and continue their fucking lives. <laughs> and, uh, and basically every other person on Nickelodeon who I grew up with went on to do fucking other shows and continue their successful careers. And I feel like I've been just, just on the outside going, what, what happened? Um, so I, I should have, I should have cried. <laughs> well, yeah. You can cry now if you want. Oh no, I've, I've gotten it all out okay. over the last 10 years. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> then what, like, let's, let's unpack it. What happened? And what after Ned's you I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I truly don't I thought coming off the show I, I was the lead in my own show that was very successful had a great audience worldwide audience yeah Ugh. I thought I'm in so the first the first roadblock I hit was oh I have not I have not been doing acting for three years I've been doing Ned's acting and Nickelodeon acting, mm. uh, which is not the same thing as movie and other TV acting. So the first thing I hit when I got out of Ned's was, oh, I gotta go learn. Like, I gotta go get good. Cause my little like decent shtick, <laughs> my like, hey, I'm kind of cool. It's, it wasn't acting. Yeah. Um, so I went and found some classes that scared the shit out of me with actors in there where I was like, oh my God, these people are better than me. I'm terrified. Let's go. Mm -hmm. And I like got to work for a few years and like really got into the craft. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah. I got into the pretentious, beautiful school of acting. Um, and I, I loved that. So that's what I did first. And then, you know, man, I think a lot of this career is timing and luck. Um, I tried to control what I could, which was my ability, my readiness, like, you know, um, I auditioned a ton. I got so close to yeah. so many of those next big yeah. things for years and years and years. And I still worked. Yeah. Like, I was still doing Lifetime movies here and there yeah, and yeah. guest stars here and there. But nothing that was as meaningful like as Ned. Thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. nothing as big. And none of the movies that I really wanted to get into. Can you, got, sorry to interrupt, but can you share something like that? You were like, you sit on your couch now and you watch it. You're like, oh, I almost had that. Um, something that like people would know or no? I, I blank them out of my memory. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, they're out there, but I, I, it would take me a while to like right, remember okay, them because I, yeah. I, I erase them. Yeah, you have from to my brain. when yeah. you're going through so much like objections yeah, and, and there's rejections. Like you gotta like. Yeah, and there's been yeah. so many. Like, yeah. I mean, it's years, years, years of acting. Um, so yeah, I mean, I got so close for so long and I, I kept the faith for so long. I was like, it's all good. Like it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And uh, then I was uh, 25 and I was out of money and uh, life changed. Did you, were you writing on Ned's money for all that time? Or were, like, what of. were you doing? Like, well, obviously of. you got like little parts and stuff, right? Like yeah, you said, Ned's but. money and then what, the other things I was working on. But people don't understand like, yeah, Ned's money was decent for a 15 year old, but we never get paid residuals. So mm. I should still be getting any other acting job. I would still still be getting paid for Neds, like now. And uh, their contracts were uh, brutal. Just one and done. That's a Just good tip, though. Done. Anyone who's getting into acting and stuff, you know, yeah. see what is in the contract. Yeah, but we had no negotiating power. That's yeah. the problem. We knew what was in it, and yeah. we tried to change it, and Nickelodeon, they're savages, <laughs> and they took advantage of children. <laughs> yeah, so. they were like, nope. Yeah, literally. Yeah. OK, so what are you doing now? Well, Darcy. Um, <laughs> No, nah, this year what's cool is podcasting. This is the new medium. I, I've been wanting to get into it, but I have been waiting for the right time and the right producers. And now uh, Raimi being one of mine. Yeah. Uh, Anami, Anami. Anami and Raimi. Mm -hmm. And then I have a Ned's Rewatch podcast that's going to oh launch uh, so in February. Fun. And so, yeah, so right now, the beginning of the year is all about getting these podcasts up and out. Mm -hmm. um, growing up is me talking to guests and then just solo episodes talking to the audience about growing up, about life, what yeah. matters in it, how do we find our way through it. Because I think everyone's journey from adolescence to adulthood is different. And there's no clear benchmarks or, or roadmap anymore. 
Mm -hmm. I think maybe there used to be, but now it just feels like everyone's journey is their own and it's hard to figure that transformation out. It's hard to know when you're an adult and how to adult. Yeah. I think I've struggled with it. When did you feel like you were finally like at a point where, yeah, you're like, I'm an adult. Like I can kind of figure this out now. Yeah. I felt older at 25. I just felt like, oh, wow, 25. Like. All right, I'm. That's feeling... when you were out of money, or <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, that was a couple months Correlation after. There. That was that was a couple months after uh, my birthday, and I was like, oh, now I'm an adult because life sucks. Um, but um, <laughs> but uh, 25, I started to feel like, ooh, okay, now I'm on my way to adulthood. But really, I I don't think it was until like the last two years, like 30. Mm-hmm. What? How old 30, are you? 30, 31. Okay. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Cool. That that's really like I maybe thought I was an adult in yeah. my 20s. So what did you 30. do when you were out of money? Like you were living in LA? Yeah. I assume. I got jobs. Yeah? You like know? regular jobs or yeah. acting jobs? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, if I was getting acting jobs, I wouldn't have ran out of money. Um, like no. what did you do? Is that like what? what I kind of immediately jobs? went and got two jobs. I worked at the front desk at Equinox, which is a boozy, nice. bougie gym in, yeah. in West Hollywood or all over LA, but I worked at the West Hollywood one. So went and got a, a job at Equinox and then um, a job at a, a kind of eclectic gift shop uh, scarf company in Venice that my friends ran and I worked there for like three years. Can you dive more into that? A scarf company? What yeah. did you do? Did you sell scarves? Yeah, I ran the shop. I mm-hmm. sold scarves. I traveled. I was nice. a traveling scarf <laughs> scarf salesman for a time, which I love was that. pretty strange. You can listen to the first episode of your podcast. You talk about that, and it is a great story. That's yeah, amazing. yeah. I yeah. I mean, it was a time in my life, man. I was surviving and just like figuring it out and kind of getting this diversion from this path of my life that had been so clear. I mean, since I was a kid, it was just like, this is what I'm doing. I'm an actor and it's all going to work out. Right. It, my second pilot season, I'm on Neds, right? Like, and then all of a sudden I was 25 and had to go get some jobs and my parents got divorced and everything like crumbled. And I was just like surviving for a while mm-hmm. while still auditioning. But really that was a, a rough but good learning time in my life. Yeah. yeah. I can imagine uh, like being at Equinox and like, I'm sure people recognize you, right? occasionally you're like uh. beyond just being recognized that would happen but the the weirder emotions came when i would see people that i know and work with mm. like that's so hard yeah, yeah i i had worked with terry cruz and he he like came into our equinox once and i didn't even say hi to him like I felt some kind of ego, you know, some kind of weird, like, even though Terry's so nice, he never would have judged me for shit. And Mm -hmm. like, it's LA, you gotta work sometimes to pay your bills, like it's fine. But I felt like just awkward seeing him and I wasn't (laughs) quite like accepting that point in my life. And then uh, at my Venice shop, I saw um, Alexander Ludwig, uh, who I had known through auditions for a few years. And like, he was coming off like season fucking 12 of Vikings or whatever yeah. and and uh, Hunger Games and all this success. And I'm there like, like can yeah, I show bro. you how to wear this scarf? <laughs> and uh, I, it really was humbling, you know? Yeah. Cause the truth is like, it did hurt. Like it hurt my ego. It hurt what I want my life to look like. It hurt mm-hmm. what I want to be doing. But then on some level, I also understand like, it's not that big a deal. Like, right. Like, but I'm just I mean, working a job. Like, it's fine. This can go- transcend so much further than just like actors, because even someone like if you start your own business and it doesn't work out and people know you started your own business and then you you're like, OK, well, that didn't work out. And then you're thinking, I know I would be thinking like, oh, everyone thinks I'm like just a failure. failure and like, yeah. And it's like, really, nobody gives a fuck. No. Like, nobody cares what you're doing. Not <laughs> like, that much. Everyone's on their phone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and if they do, like, fuck them. <laughs> Truly. Yeah. yeah. If they actually care, fuck them. Yeah. And most people, they don't give a fuck. And yeah. they just want to know, like, hey, how are you? Are you yeah. good? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, you're not doing that thing anymore. You're doing something else. OK. Right. No I remember cares. I like pivoted a few times in my business and I'd have to call like my clients and tell them like, Hey, I'm kind of going this way with it. And I would like get so worked up over it. But then afterwards I'd like, they didn't, they didn't care. They're like, cool. Good for you. I'm so glad you're like doing that other thing now. That's I'm, like, it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's all in our head. Like, and I yeah. think, I think you have to pivot. I think that's what our twenties, especially, I mean, I think mm-hmm. it goes on through our whole lives, but yeah. now that I'm in my thirties, I can look back at the decade of twenties and be like, I feel like you got to be pivoting a lot because you don't know your path yet. Mm-mm. You don't know it coming out of college. Like you don't know how it's going to go. Even if you know what you want to do, you do not know how you're going to get there. What that's going to look like. Yeah. yeah. And it's mm-hmm. going to change and you're going to change. And like 
feel like you have to be pivoting and failing and feeling the identity crisis that comes with it yeah. and then shifting. I feel like that's like part of that transition. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I like, what I want to ask you, like, do you have anything that like a mantra or something that you like live by? I'll give you an example. Mine is if it's not a hell yes, it's a no. So like anytime I'm thinking about something or wanting to do something, if I don't feel that like hardcore, like even if it's something as simple, like my friends asked me to go out to a bar. Yeah. If I'm not like, hell yes, I'm like, no, thanks. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But like, and then when it comes to my business, I ask myself that all the time. Like, mm. do I want to do this? Because if it's not a hell yes, my energy is not behind it yeah. and it's never going to come across well, you know? Yeah. I don't know that I have it in like clear mantra form, but I have over the last few years been getting more acquainted with what a yes feels like inside of me. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like a more subtle listening. And yeah, I don't know that I have it in like words, but I have gotten better at just trusting when I'm making a decision, trusting like what my answer is and going with it and whatever happens, like being like, yeah, I know where I, I chose that from. Right, you can like feel it better now. Yeah, yeah. And, and I used to be like a major uh, people pleaser. I used to be a yes to everything mm -hmm. that anyone else was saying, or I, I never wanted to make anyone uncomfortable because I'm a sensitive, emotional person. So in my head, it's Pisces. like, I never want to, yeah. <laughs> Are you a Pisces? Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. like, I never want to cause other people emotional anything, but turns out that's a terrible way to live. And like, then I was like giving up my own needs and wants and boundaries all the time. So I used to say yes to everything and I used to not actually be in touch with like, what do I actually want? And mm -hmm. over the last few years, it's been a great uh, journey getting in touch with that. That's cool. I've always wondered as a famous person, I mean, especially when you were in the height of like Ned's, like people knew who you were, obviously you're on TV. Did you ever feel like people took advantage of you or wanted to be your friend because you were famous? Did you ever have that feeling? Um. I've always had really good friends and a lot of my friends were in the industry at the time anyway. Mm -hmm. um, that's out there, but what that made me think of, so I grew up in Georgia and I actually, I, I just went back for the first time in 12 years. I hadn't been back to where I'm from in 12 years since we sold our house. And going back um, really made me reflect on this thing that happened. Like during NEDS, I would shoot NEDS for six months and then go back to my public middle school and with all the people I grew up with and go to school and be normal. And oh, then, I didn't know that, okay. Yeah, so yeah. during NEDS, I was like a semester on NEDS and a semester in public school, and it was really grounding. Anytime we would leave LA and I'd go back to Georgia, it was just grounding. I was no longer, even, if the, even if the kids knew the show, I was just another kid in school then. So like whatever hype would be like for one moment, and then it's like, yeah, whatever, now we're in middle school, like no one cares. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> And that was really good for me and I had good friends back home. And so anytime I went home, it always felt super grounding and just really like resetting me to like who I am and not the fluff of LA. But then, then I went back in high school one time. We were spending more of our time in LA. I'd only go back um, to Atlanta a couple weeks a year. And I was, this was probably around like 16 or 17. And I went back and I went to a party with kids I had grown up with my entire life. But now they're at an age where like, the struggle for identity and to be cool is, I, I guess, bigger. Mm -hmm. And me being on TV, all of a sudden, these people that I knew my whole life were like treating me different at a party. Mm -hmm. And they were treating me bad. They were like really wanting, wanting to talk to, to talk. me, yeah. but it, was, it wasn't me they were wanting to talk to, you know? It was like, the idea, the of, idea of a famous like someone, person. Yeah. yeah. Even That's though like I was like, they're going to get. So. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. So that moment was weird for me. That was mm -hmm. like, oh, things are changing. Like, yeah, I got to keep my friends who are treating me normal back in Georgia. And then it's not quite the same now going out. Yeah. See, that's what I was asking, because I feel like a lot of people that get to this height of whether it's like a social media star or whatnot, like they're almost like they put this boundary around them. Like they don't even want to accept new friends unless the new friend is also somewhat famous. Right. Because there is that feeling of like, are you just trying to like use me or whatnot? So, yeah, I, I mean, that's yeah. real in this industry. And it's not like I mean, it is toxic, but it also comes from a place. It's like we're all out here creating and collaborating and like we all want things. We all have dreams mm -hmm. and visions for our lives and we're all trying to figure out how to get there. But it can just turn, yeah, really ugly when someone you're talking to has a fucking <laughs> agenda and they yeah. want something from you. It's like, oh, cool. Right. You don't you don't want to talk to me. <laughs> you want to yeah. talk to like what I can get you get, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Or, 
yeah, whatever, like, boost your identity. Yeah. Well, now that you're, like, I'm sure you're still auditioning and stuff, like, what type mm-hmm. of stuff do you go out for? And what and what do you want to do, I guess? Because I feel like you could be typecasted, maybe. I guess. I don't know. I want to do <laughs> I want to do everything. Like, I just want to work on good projects and, it's, uh-huh. and meaningful, like, stories that I think are cool, characters that I think are fun. Um, I go out for a lot, you know, TV, like, movies. Okay. Drama. Yeah, drama, comedy. comedy. I mean, I love all of it, and I, I can do a lot of it. So I just want to work with people who are better than me. Mm-hmm. I want to, like, be challenged, and I want to work on another – project i mean that means as much to people as ned's to be honest yeah like like that's that was a beautiful thing getting to work on something that still is in people's like hearts like people still love it yeah it's like a cult following no yeah am i okay yeah yeah. no for sure there's like i'm part of the cult yeah yeah Yeah, ramey's in it yeah she leads the fan club (laughs) (laughs) when Um, when did you um because you're on social media you have a following and whatnot when did you start social media and like kind of how did that even work? Yeah, fucking social media, acting man. acting <laughs> to social media, it's a whole, you know? It's a whole relationship now, but s- Ned's missed social media. Like, Ned's was That's done. That's what I was asking about. Ned's yeah. was done when Twitter came out, and, like... Because that could have really helped your case. Oh, sure, sure could have, Darcy. On... Yeah, sure fucking could have. Huh? <laughs> if you're, um, like, the Ned kid no, on also on social media. No, literally, every... every Pack it up. Every... A uh, kid who was on Nickelodeon or Disney, the generation right after Ned's, mm-hmm. their followings were huge on yep. social media. And yeah. of course that helped with new jobs and producers looking at their numbers. And mine were pretty low compared. Of course. Um, yeah. Because we missed that timing. And uh, also, we missed the t- I missed the timing mentally. Like social media started to become a thing, but I had found my success the old way, which was just auditioning and going to acting class. So it took me a while to pivot to how important social media was. And then it was like a complicated relationship for a while. I like YouTubed for a while, but that <laughs> never really like took off. I don't think I ever really did it well. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> these YouTubers really, I never did it well. I, tr- I always tried and was never consistent enough because I didn't really give a fuck. I think yeah. it kind of sucks that you have to do that as an actor it, now. It like does. It really su- sucks. Yeah. It does suck because it's not, not the, the same. same thing. It no. is not the same thing. Just because you have a big social media following and are good on there doesn't doesn't mean you can fucking carry a movie. No. When you go to auditions, do you have to put in your social handles? No. Because I've but been they on might some look. where they, they ask you for them. Yeah, no, yeah. but it might be in the submission. Like my, right. my agents might might yeah. throw it in there. Mm-hmm. And I know it's like I know it's important. I know people get jobs from mm-hmm. it, even if they can't act. Oh yeah. Like mm-hmm. I get and I get why. It's like a number. Even though, even though I've found with social media, the numbers even though they look quantifiable, like, oh, they have this many followers. That means mm-hmm. our project will get all of them. No. No. It doesn't really transfer. I, like, so I, I do music as well. In my head for years, I was like, I have this many followers. If 5% of the followers buy my shit or show up, like, I'm good. It never no. really translated. Yeah. Not in the same way that you think like that number, you know, no. converts. It doesn't. But when you were building your social, like, did you have to build a social media? Did you already kind of have one because the people knew who you were? I mean, I don't know. You know, that's like not an easy thing to do. TikTok was the only one that was good to me. Okay. Instagram, I feel like for years I was posting and it like, yeah, I have a couple hundred thousand, but like it would not go up. It would just kind of stay unless someone else with more followers posted something with me in it. Oh, okay. That was the only time it went up. Uh-huh. So Instagram's algorithm, I think, is fucking trash, <laughs> uh, even though I like it the most. I'm like I've on Instagram way, yeah. the most. But I think the algorithm is not generous. I think it's generous. I think it's trash. Um, although, I guess Reels, it's getting a little better. I don't know. Yeah. I think, I think it's shit. TikTok came <laughs> along and was like, hey, Here's an algorithm. Do stuff, yeah, yeah it, I got to a million followers on TikTok in like six months, Whoa. and I was like, "Oh, people yeah. do know Ned. <laughs> <laughs> people love me. I'm not irrelevant." Yeah. Um, speaking of people loving you, um, how's the dating life? What do you? <laughs> <laughs> I like that segue. I'm really good at segues. Um, you live in LA. I mean, LA dating is really tough. Like, are you I on guess. the dating apps? I got on the dating apps during <laughs> the pandemic because I was so lonely i saw you on raya <gasps> i've oh, never been on I know, raya, I'm just you liar. Yeah, <laughs> i never out. got on the bougie raya i don't yeah. know man i'm always late to the technology what was um, your uh, in the pandemic what was your is it hinge was it bumble hinge and, hinge and tinder tinder okay um oh old school yeah i guess i, I just joined all of them <laughs> so so i had been in a long-term relationship when all of the apps were were okay, coming out yeah. so i had never been on any of them 
And then, and then I was so uh, fucking devastated from the end of that relationship that I was not any of them. And then the pandemic hit, and I was like, well, I am, there's no chance to meet anyone. I'm so lonely. Let me try <laughs> this thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't know. It was all right. I get why people use it. I met some nice people through it. Yeah. But I don't think I'll get back on. Yeah. I, 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 I don't like um, swiping. I don't like judging. Mm -hmm by the judging just by this little fucking profile yeah. like and judging like hundreds of people to get to one, someone I'm even like slightly maybe attracted to yeah. but if I meet them in person I might not care about them at all like it's so time consuming yeah, yeah. It, ultimately the payoff I'm like oh, I'd rather fucking be lonely or I'll, or I'll <laughs> meet or I'll meet, I kind of meet people on Instagram that that's that's so you're saying people slide can in slide the into the DMs. Look, it's ah. happened a couple times. And I'm just saying, like, sometimes <laughs> sometimes friends of mine, like, dudes of mine are like, wait, how, how'd you meet them? And I'm like, I'm sorry, bro. I'm, like, a little famous. <laughs> and I I can get She was a Ned fan. <laughs> oh, God, look, man, people have slid in the DMs. That's and so funny. I've responded. So. Wait, have you, like, been on a date with someone that would just, like, wanted to talk about Ned's declassified? No. Ugh. That'd oh be, fuck no! That'd be hilarious. Though. God no! <laughs> like if they just want to yeah, like, like a fan. Yeah, like, no, like it's one thing for them to like know it and then start getting to know me. Right. But if they just want to talk about Ned, God no. But it would be like if they did that and they like faked you out thinking that they actually wanted you, but then you get to the date and they just like that's, are going. That's full never fan. happened. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> because if they get to know me, then they want to know me. You know, thank God. You know. Yeah. Are you that interesting, amazing. though, is the question. <sighs> I think so. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. My dating life is cool. Listen, I was in, I was in like s just committed monogamous relationships for so much of my life. And over the last four years, I am Mr. Situationship. Because um, I, just, I just can't fucking do it. That's fine. I can't do it. I did yeah. it so fully. And uh, I'm over it. And I still don't think necessarily like polyamory works. Like I still don't, mm -hmm. I'm not, I haven't like flipped to any side. <laughs> I'm just Mr. Situation yeah. Ship. I date now. Yeah. Dating's fun. Dating's, Dating's great. Fun. Yeah. I never did it. I was always like, mm -hmm. oh, we're on a date. Oh, we're in something now. <laughs> Wait, I was just going to ask you, do you pay on the first date? But I actually might know that answer. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that was a, I hate that clip. I, There's this on me I clip. deleted it. That was a oh. whole, listen. <laughs> yeah, because you look like a fucking asshole. I look like an idiot. Wait, all but right? you looked cool in it, though. Wait, let well, me just I was, tell, I cool, let me tell you. I sounded listeners. like an idiot. We asked if he, well, Ramey asked him if he pays on the first date, and he essentially in like a weird way said no. No, but no, look, I just let, hesitated. Let's just, hear here's, me. Here's why I hesitated. Here's why I hesitated. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I pay if I fucking take someone to dinner. Yeah. <laughs> like, if we go get drinks, I'm paying, sure. Um, but m the, only th the only reason I hesitated and then the conversation went elsewhere <laughs> was like, a first date isn't always like a first date anymore. Like, sometimes it's like coffee. Right. And then it's like, so why I hesitated was like, there's not always like a clear first date. Like, oh my God, mm. we're going on like a first date. Like, this is a date but so for you're saying sure. you yeah. pay for coffee? Not necessarily. <laughs> no, I mean, you would if it was clear just, that I, it was a date. You would if it was clear, like, yeah. you asked them out. Yeah. We're and trying like, to make you look better here, bro. Like, <laughs> I will not be Okay, so just so we can make this very clear. Uh, a, none of it's clear. A, what, is, you what do are, you want? You are single. I am B, sing I'm single. you may or may not respond to someone sliding in. Yep. And C, you, I'm just going to say, you will pay for the date. Let's just. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll pay for the date. I'm glad we got that established. Look, there was a time <laughs> oh where God. I had like no money, so that that changed. <laughs> he was things. looking for a little sugar mama. Yeah, yeah honestly, you were no. Into that. Th there was a time where like the thought of paying for a date was like tragic, and then there also was a time in previous relationships where like the assumption that I pay for everything became so fucking. Oh, annoying. have you seen Triangle of Sadness? Yes. You know that. Oh, that conversation part. was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Triangle Sadness, yeah. great film. Yeah. That conversation, I totally resonated. Oh, with. I resonated with it too. Like that. Like both ways. It's like that's there's a balance eventually. Yes, and but so. but in that scene for me, mm -hmm. he called it right. She was manipulative. Oh, and she admitted. Guys, it. if exactly. we're gonna talk about it this much, can you tell the audience what it is? Uh, Triangle oh. Sadness <laughs> is an incredible movie. Go see it. But there's a scene at the beginning where it's literally a couple having a discussion about this. The mm -hmm. guy is saying, "Hey, I always pay you." Not that that's a problem, but you told me you were going to pay for this dinner, mm -hmm. and now you're not, and you're expecting me to, and what the fuck? And then she like cries and makes a big scene rather than hearing what he's saying. And like I've had that in past relationships where like me paying was the default, and like I spent a ton of money that was just like ridiculous, right? Uh, out of a default that like 
oh, because I have it, like, I, I'm going to spend it always. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm always buying you meals. Like, so that's kind of why I have, like, a... Uh, that's tough, yeah. It's like a weird relationship with it. However, yeah, listen, I like paying. I like paying. It's a yeah. nice feeling going like, no, I got this. I, I honestly love that. Like, it's a great it's a great feeling going, no, 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 I got you. I love taking a I, nice woman out. Yeah. I also, I'm going to keep going with this because I love this topic. Okay, okay. Um, Just the, like, relationship aspect of money. Yeah. Because I'm a firm believer in prenups and I want yeah, to dude. always have separate bank accounts. And my boyfriend and I have this, like, we have this talk. We are on the same page. Mm -hmm. Um, We are so, like, I've never fought with him about money ever. It's amazing. But, yeah, I want to get your take. What would be, because it is much easier if the couple, they make similar amounts of money. Yes. Um, so I will say that's one thing. Yes. But two, if that wasn't the case, do you feel like, will you send a prenup? What, what are your, what's your take on this? Fuck. I mean, I'm getting married now in this concept. Yep, yep, uh, yep. I just told you I don't even commit to relationships. Um, <laughs> so I don't know <laughs> well, when I'm getting there. If, if. But no, in theory, <laughs> yeah. in theory, I'd like to be a father. So I guess I'm going to have to fucking marry someone at some point. Yeah, um, you can have a yeah, baby. No. Come on. We're in 2020. You can oh, have a baby. Oh, that's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah, I, could Nick, I could Nick Cannon this shit. <laughs> I'm going to have to make a ton more money, though. Um, uh, I, I Yes, I, I'm a, I, a firm believer in prenups. Yeah. I think money needs to be... Uh, a open discussion with each other about uh, boundaries, comfort, where you're at, where I'm That's at. That's the key to like, everything we just talked about, yeah, it, talking about yeah, it. Yeah, it needs to not yeah. be this taboo or manipulated emotional yeah. subject like in Triangle of Sat. It needs yeah. to not be this thing that when it gets brought up, it's like, what, you're saying you don't love me? It's right. like, no, no, we need to talk about these things. It yeah. it's really matters. Financial um, stability is important and it's separate. Mm -hmm. Like you mm -hmm. each need to be financially separate or uh, stable. Yeah. And for someone that like has made less money than a significant other, I never wanted to feel like I was like dependent on that. So it's like for me, even like though he made more, I still wanted it to be separate. Yeah. You know, like I still wanted that for myself. So, yeah, I think it's really important to discuss, especially when it comes to like marriage, like marriage yeah. is a not only an emotional binding, but a legal and financial binding of your lives. And I, there's like default prenups that are like government written. And it's like, you wanna just go on like some default or without a prenup, you're just going on the default marriage contract, like mm -hmm. without asking what you guys actually want and what you actually uh, wanna perceive in the future. I think, I think there's this notion of like, what are you saying? We're not going to make it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what yeah. are you saying? We're not forever. We <laughs> said your forever. acting tryout. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, and I think that's ridiculous. Like mm. you need to be realistic. Most yeah. fucking ha over half uh, marriages end. So yeah. just be realistic that this there is, is a divorce chance. stand podcast. Yeah. I mean, it, you just have to be real about it. Like, yeah. yeah, dude, there is a chance we don't make this journey that we want to go yeah. on. And what does that look like separating? Because, man, divorces can get so ugly on the finance side. Right, right. Um, we're running out of time, but I yeah. wanted to ask you, what's something that you do that's outside of work? Like, um, besides music and all the things that kind of, like, you know, we've talked about. Any, like, my vice is reality TV. Um, I also like to play pickleball. Like, what's something that you just really get down and dirty with? <laughs> Don't you do beach volleyball? All over the summer, I played a ton of beach volleyball. That was fun. I don't know. I do what? What the fuck do I do? I don't know. Listen, I got a weird life now that I don't have day jobs. Now I wake up and have to decide what I do every day. Mm -hmm. And some days I don't know what I do. I and don't. that's like your, your they become your hobbies. Yeah, but I don't know. I beach volleyball over the summer. Um, I like to travel. Uh, I write. I try and read, although my attention span because of fucking TikTok is just yeah. decimated. Um, I smoke weed, you know. Nice. Uh, <laughs> we actually had a whole conversation about this earlier. We did. Um, but I really like, um, what, are, what are they called? What? Stizzy? Yeah, Stizzy, but no, the... I like the um, Kiva ones. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. What's your go-to go weed um, smoking or edibles? Or? I love smoking, but I'm trying to I'm trying to do less of it Cut this back. year. Yeah, just on my lungs, so then it becomes edibles. Edibles are nice. You okay, know? okay, cool. I guess um, we can. Um, but yeah, that's that's my that's my vice. Yeah. But hobby, I, all sorts of things. You know, mm -hmm. I I live near the beach, so in the summer it's like any time I can get to the beach. Yeah. Uh, beach volleyball and just like go hang at the beach is what's up. I work out a lot. Like I love that. Meditate. Nice. Play video games. How often do you meditate? So I've been off my practice for a while, but starting a couple days ago, I've been mm -hmm. back on my twice a day. That's that's my oh, practice. Cool. It's twice yeah. a day, 20 minutes a day. Oh, okay, nice. I yeah. do I do 10 for sure every morning, so I like from 6 to 6:10, but sometimes I'll throw Did in a 15. Did you say 6 to 6:10? 
Yeah, 6 a.m. to 6 10. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. That's like what makes this. me get up and like, yeah. Yeah. Dude, no. Yeah. If I mm-hmm. meditated at 6 a.m., I'd you go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. Yeah, I wouldn't meditate. I'd be asleep. So what I do is I make my cup of coffee and then I sit in my recliner and I have my feet up like this and I have my coffee in my hand. Ah, uh, so, so I if physically you fall asleep, can't you're gonna burn asleep. yourself yeah. tight. Yeah, That's yeah. Good. it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, One day I'll be a morning person, <laughs> but not what this time. Decade. Do you wake up? Like 10. Oh no way. Yeah. What time do you go to bed? Like one. Okay, that's why. Uh, you that know, makes sense. If you just yeah. shift. Yeah. yeah, I get my nine hours. <laughs> um, okay, so where can people find you? Tell us all the hey, things. Hey, hi. Uh, find me. Um, yeah, look, uh, I'm on all the things, Instagram, you know, TikTok, Twitter. Uh, the, the pod Growing Up With Devin is now being released every Tuesday. Yep. Uh, that is its own Instagram, Growing Up With Devin pod or something. You'll just go to my Let's Instagram, Devin yeah. Work Harder, Devin Workheiser on TikTok. Just Google my name. <laughs> just Google him. <laughs> and it's and in the show notes. You can't find him on the dating apps anymore. You can't but. find me on the dating apps anymore. <laughs> I probably still have a profile out, but they've probably taken me off because I haven't logged in in so long. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah you can't find me there, but... <laughs> You can try my DMs. Yay! <laughs> Thank Get you some so models much for coming in there. On. Thanks for models having me. Models listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye guys. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to that Onami podcast. Onami is a creator-led educational platform that teaches you the things you wished you learned in school, so you can thrive in adulthood. Onami lessons are completely free, and they're taught by some of your favorite creators from around the internet. Head to onami.co to start learning about things like budgeting, investing, taxes, how to thrive in your relationships, how to find your dream job, and so much more. That's onami.co, O-N-O-M-Y.co. See you there.